Good evening to one and all, and thank you for tuning in to our Wednesday night virtual service here at Foundation Baptist Church. And we want to thank those who have been watching the service continuous. We want to thank you for doing so. And let us sing unto the Lord here this evening. Christ returneth. Christ returneth.
salvation, Lord. And Lord, if we begin this virtual service, I pray, God, you bless the preacher. Fill him with your spirit, God, and yeah. guide him and lead him as he preaches. And I pray, God, the listeners will be convicted, Lord, whatever same God, or whatever they need to grow in, Lord. I pray, God, I surrender to your will, Lord, as they listen to the message tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. Let's continue our service here with our scripture song here this evening. First Corinthians chapter... 10, 2 Corinthians, I'm sorry, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, and we're going to do 3 and 5, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3 to 5. What two, three? For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Mighty through God to live pulling down the strongholds, casting down, casting down imaginations, and every I think, and every I think that is of it is To the pulling down the strongholds, casting down, casting down imaginations, and every I think, and every I think that it's all to the I praise the Lord. Let's continue to sing here now. Proverbs chapter uh, 28, verse 13. Proverbs 28, 13. Let's sing unto the Lord. And these were these scripture songs we got it through Pastor Dean Runyon. Proverbs chapter 28, verse 13. Proverbs chapter 28, verses 13. He that covereth his sins shall not prosper. He that covereth his sins shall not prosper. But whoso confesses that forsaketh them shall have mercy, shall have mercy, shall. Have mercy, shall Psalm 
Let's sing on to the Lord. Psalm 106.4. <clears throat> Remember me, O Lord. Remember me. Remember me, O Lord. Remember me with the favor that thou bearest unto thy people, O visit me. On Sunday at 10 o'clock, and of course, on um, Sunday evening at 6 o'clock, and Wednesday evening at 6.30. Uh, please, uh, if you are part of the, the WhatsApp group, please continue to stay tuned. Uh, we normally send out the link uh, just before the service, about 15, 20 minutes before the service. So please be reminded about that. And also, if you continue, uh, if you miss the service and you are in the WhatsApp group, you, will, you can go back to that day. And you can always look to see the service. And if you miss the service, please, even though the service has been passed, it is still available for you to watch. Just to let you know that. And, uh, and to encourage you, please, if you miss any service, you can always go back and watch them. Great services, great preaching. I've been enjoying the book of, uh, of, the book of Samuel. My pastor has been teaching on that. There's so much of truth that we can apply in our lives. Please. Please continue to do so and continue to watch the service. It will help you to grow. Um, is a, uh, faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. So we need to hear the word of God. And people cannot grow because they will be scattered if there's no pastor to teach them. We have the opportunity to hear from our pastor. Amen. And um, also for the tithes and the offering, we would like to thank all those who have been giving to the tithes and the offering. And of course, the number there you can call to make an arrangement or you can make an arrangement by going to the bank and deposit that uh, ties offering and faith promise into the bank account and um, at the Demerara Bank with a number on the screen there, right? So uh, those who have been given, uh, it's been a blessing to give. The Bible said it's a blessing to give than to receive. Please, I know this is a situation. Many are given um, out of their, uh, even with uh, this situation that we have with the COVID-19 and limited resource, not much work, not much finances. But folks, it's not to give millions of dollars but give give what belongs to the lord so god can bless you by god don't bless people by giving a million if you give one million and somebody give a thousand dollars or five hundred dollars or three hundred dollars it doesn't mean the person with the one million will be gaining more it is it, it is depends on how you give if you give it out of abundance or you give sacrificially if you give sacrificially you don't have and you give God will bless you back tremendously, right? So please don't forget what the word of God says and don't be discouraged by what people are seeing and don't look upon your circumstances and how to give. You give as the Lord laid upon your heart. I just want to make, make, mention that to you. All right, let's continue to sing here uh, this evening. Let's continue to sing as we continue our service here. Then we're going to go straight into the preaching. And can it be that I should give? And can it be that I should give?
one of my favorite here, uh, Foundation Baptist Church. Now, as we have the Word of God being preached, just to get your Bible out, and as we prepare now to hear the Word of God, please get your Bible, put aside everything, as we stay focused, and as Pastor Bodram will preach for us here this evening. Praise the Lord and thank you for being with us. Thank you for making the time and the effort. I know it's not easy with all what's going on, but it is still possible that we can still be close to God and listen to the Word of God. Amen? But let's turn to the Word of God in the book of Psalms 100 tonight. Psalms 100. But let's close our eyes and let's pray. Psalms 100, I'll be teaching and preaching yeah. from tonight. Let's pray. Father, we thank you tonight. Jehovah God Almighty, through your Son and in the Holy Spirit name tonight. Thank you, my God, for helping. Thank you for being with us, God. And thank you for technology tonight that it can be used around this time that your work can go forward. And people can be in their home and listen to your word preached, my God. And I pray that you help me, that I may be held to your people. And for all those that are watching, my God, I pray tonight that people may surrender their lives, God. And they may come to know you if they are not saved tonight, dear Jesus. In your <coughs> precious name, I ask. Amen. I have a little joke for you tonight. Amen. Amen. There was this family. They left the U.S. and they went on vacation, but they came to the Caribbean. And this is something real that took place, amen? So they came to the Caribbean on vacation. And you know the Caribbean is a little different. The streets, children hang out, they play, you look forward to the afternoon. So this husband and wife went out with their child and they were walking in the streets. And they visited different places. And they mingled with the children in the streets a little bit, their small child. But as they went back and they left, they were on the plane, their child was very sad. This child was very sad. And they did not have time to question this child, what was wrong. So when they reached home, they saw the child's behavior, it's still not good. So the dad sat down with the child and asked the child, what's going on? And he was able to question the child because the child looked distraught and troubled. So the dad questioned this child and the child said that he is so sorry for people in those countries that don't have much, especially where they went. And as they saw the poor children on the road, that they are so poor that she's sorry for them, that they were eating sticks. So the dad turned around and said, no, it's not sticks. That's cane they're eating. They're getting the sugar out of the cane. I hope you get the joke. Amen? Amen. But let's get to Psalms 100. Amen? Amen? That was funny to me. Amen? Amen. <laughs> Psalms 100. It says, verse 1, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord, verse 2, serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing, verse 3. Know ye that the Lord, he is God? It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Yeah. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. Verse 5. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. And his truth endureth to all generations. This is amazing. Amen? Amen. God, what is incredible. Please look up Psalm 100. is the only psalm that is entitled a psalm of praise. That's right, it's the only psalm that is entitled a psalm of praise. One of the most difficult things to find is a state of mind that has joyfulness and gladness. And especially around this time, it is difficult. Especially in the current climate of the world because of the sickness that is encircled 
this planet, and also because of our own choices, has made it difficult to see people make a joyful noise, as verse 1 says. It is very difficult. The Hebrews were not the only ones called to make a joyful noise unto the Lord. The entire planet are all lands, all nations, all languages, regardless of our conditions, because our entire planet has one God and one Father of all. When all nations know God, this will be an incredible scene. I imagine this and I visualize it as we go out and we try to reach people and they don't want to accept the Lord. They don't even want to know. But just to think, every nation acknowledging God, that would be wonderful. This is not possible until the gospel of Jesus Christ is preached to the end of the earth and the Lord returns and makes things right. Amen. This would not be possible. Our happy God should be worshipped by happy people. A cheerful spirit is exactly is in keeping with his nature, as verse 1 says. This is the nature of God, and this is the way God wants us to be. The most satisfying and fulfilling joy we can experience that can fill the voids in our heart is serving the Lord. Yeah. Nations and people upon this earth do not experience the real joy that is satisfying. That's right. The choice not to accept the Lord Jesus Christ leaves an emptiness in the lives of millions. Yeah. The emptiness of countless millions through our world is visible. We can look and see it visibly. The countenances of people are visible. They cannot hide from the way they feel inwardly. It shows it outwardly. There is endless involvement in things to bring joy, but none is lasting. Joy is continuously sought out, but never found. The real joy giver, Jesus Christ, is offering a fulfilled life to all who will accept him as their only Savior. I want to repeat this again. The real joy giver is offering a fulfilled life to all who will accept him as their only Savior. Jesus is our joy giver. Yeah. Instead of turning to the Lord Jesus Christ, people are looking for joy everywhere else. As this world draws farther and farther away from God, more people are turning to alcohol, drugs, pornography, gambling, and anything that can give a little joy. People are simply looking for joy in the wrong things instead of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Jews were waiting for the promised Messiah, but he came and passed by them because they had their own idea how the promised Savior would be. True. It's the same thing that is happening today. The joy we need is right in front of us and is passing us by. Jesus Christ is the completer of every individual. Many of us can testify how the emptiness in our lives before we were believers in Jesus Christ led to the temporary joy of this world that was never satisfied. I could testify of it and many believers. Emphasis in place in serving the Lord with gladness. Let's look back at this verse. Verse 1, Psalms 100. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye land. Emphasis again is placed in serving the Lord with gladness. Amen. There should be joy as a rule when worshiping God. With a holy joy, we should really serve God. It will bring honor to God. And this is not what we see today with many Christians and even believers. And I truly don't know if people are saved. 
That's between them and God. But there's not a real joy today with those that serve God. Because God tells us as we serve Him, we should have joy. Amen. Amen. We should be willing and glad when it's time to go to the house of our God. Praise the Lord. I am glad and excited. There should be anticipation and eagerness to commune with our God. But it doesn't seem so. It seems burdensome. It seems like a weight. It is awesome that we have access to God present. I want to praise God for that. Amen. Verse 3. Let's look down at verse 3 here. What it says. Know ye that the Lord is God. It is he that hath made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pastor. We ought to know. I'm sorry, we ought to know whom we worship. That's what this is saying here. We cannot know ourselves unless we know our God. Right. But immediately after we trusted the Lord Jesus Christ and His Spirit took residence within our hearts, there was an unspeakable joy that no tongue can tell. It is like a great overflowing well springing up. This is a famous hymn and I love it. It is true. And this is true. A strong invitation is given to us how we should worship the Lord Jesus Christ. Not that God need us or anything we have. I want to repeat this again. A strong invitation is given to us how we should worship the Lord Jesus Christ. Not that God need us or anything we have. It's the Lord's will that we should serve him in a state of mind and heart joyfully. This is one thing that is lacking in the service of the Lord. There is not a real joy. There is not a real gladness in serving God. We should serve the Lord and devote ourselves to his service. But the Lord Jesus Christ states specifically. That's right. Specifically how we should come before his presence. God states it. Please let's turn to Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 47 and 48. Deuteronomy chapter 4, I'm sorry, chapter 28, verse 47 and 48. Let's read. Because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness and with gladness of heart, for the abundance of all things. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemy, which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger, and in thirst, and in nakedness, and in want of all things. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he hath destroyed thee. Amen. God states how we should serve him. Amen. God states it. Amen. It is amazing as we just read, God states how we should come as we worship Him. And many of us that serve God, we don't consider when we come to God how we should serve Him. Come on. It's the Lord's will that we should serve Him in a state of mind and heart joyfully. God wants us to serve Him joyfully. If we come into the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ, with our families, or secretly, or as individual, or in public worship, we should do it cheerfully, the Word of God said. And I'll, I'll be honest with you, with the years being saved, this is not what I see from the countenance of believers. There is not a joy, there is not an excitement, there is not an anticipation, True. and an excitement. What is really going on? Come on. The Lord, He is God, the only living and true God. God is perfect and He's an eternal spirit. Amen? Amen. Amen. It is God that has made us and not we ourselves. The Lord God is the rightful owner of us. 
We fully belong to God and we are his property. Yeah. Amen. The Lord has the right to rule over each one of us. Please let's look at verse 3 what it says here. It says, know ye that the Lord, he is God. This is amazing. It seems like God is asking us if we don't know who he is. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. The way we approach God and we serve God like he's not God. And God is simply indicating to us here. Yes. We tend to forget that God is a perfect and he's an eternal spirit. It is God that has made us and not we ourselves. Right. The Lord God is the rightful owner of us and we fully belong to God. We are his property. The Lord God has a right to rule over us. The Lord is our judge and we do as he bid us to do. Okay. Why would God want us to think and consider who he is? We are forgetful creatures because of sin. We are told how we should approach God and then consider. We should think intelligently who God is. Let's look back at this what it says here. Let's look at this carefully verse 3. It says, know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that have made us. Is this saying here like we forget who has made us? And not we ourselves? Like it seems that we forget this. And we are his people and the sheep of his pastor. Yes, we do. God knows that we will forget who we are and the way we look at him. We tend to forget that God is reminding us this. Why would God want, to, want us to think and consider who he is? We are forgetful creatures, like I just mentioned, because of sin. We are told how we should approach God. And then consider. We should think intelligently who God is. Amen. And this is not what we do. We do not. We all fail to consider who really God is. We approach him and come before his presence. We cannot stand before his presence physically as we are. God is a holy God. Present. This alone should make us consider who God is. The Lord, the Lord's word that proceeded out of his mouth brought all things into existence. This alone is amazing. We approach God in worship and consider who God really is. I put it as when we eat. That's right. I want to repeat this again. We approach God in worship and consider who God really is as when we eat. There is no thoughts or consideration how the food affects our body or digestive. Let me explain a little bit. Most of us, and that includes me at times, we eat and we're done. We do not consider as the food goes down, it's within our intestine. We do not consider how the amino acid breaks down the food, digest it, and then the nutrient is taken through the blood to different parts of our body. And it's distributed equally. We do not consider this. You know what we really do? We approach God and we serve God and many times even I'm guilty of this. We do not consider who God is and what he is and that's how we serve God. I am guilty of this and I see this with a lot of Christians. We take God lightly who he is and he's a holy God. We approach God in worship and consider who God really is. Like I said, Likely. True. If we do consider who God is, it will transform. Please listen up. It will transform into our outward joy. Amen. And praise and thanks, it will be visible. Yes, sir. If we truly consider who God is, it will show forth our praise. There will be a lot of praises. Right. There will be a lot of thanks. Yes, and there will be a lot of gratefulness. Yes, we do not. It do not proceed out of our mouth. That's right.
Let's look at verse 4. It says, verse 4, Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. The word of God says, please look up, enter into his gates with thanksgiving. This is something that is lacking. Thanksgiving. As long as we are receivers of mercy, we must be givers of thanks. Amen. I want to repeat this again. As long as we are receivers of the mercies of God, we must be givers of thanks. And this Good. is lacking. God's mercy permits us to enter into his presence. We need to be thankful unto God. We need to let the praises be in our hearts as well as on our tongue. And let all praise be to him who truly deserves it. We need to bless the Lord's name because he has blessed us. We need to bless the Lord when, we, when he gives us or even takes away. That's right. We need to bless the Lord even when he gives us things or even when he takes it away. The unchanging and unwavering of God and all creation deserves our praise and thanks. God deserves our praise and our thanks. Yeah. Verse 5, let's look at it. Verse 5 sums it up greatly. Let's look at verse 5. For the Lord is good. Wow, God is good. Praise the Lord. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endureth to all generations. Yeah. God is truly good. Verse 5 is well said by the psalmist, for the Lord is good. Verse 5 sums up God's character and contains tons of reason for his praise. God is good. God is gracious. God is kind. God is loving. And he's generous. Right. God is love. We do not approach God as a holy God the way we should. And this is what I see visibly. We take God lightly and not seriously the way we should. As we read, read in Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 47 and 48, we saw what God did when the Israelites served him not the way he prescribed. Please let's go back to this and let's read it. Deuteronomy, and I'll be finished. Deuteronomy chapter 27. I'm sorry, chapter 28. Let's look at this. It says, verse 47, Because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness and with gladness of heart for the abundance of all things. Please look up. For the abundance of all things that God blesses us with, we do not serve God joyfully and cheerfully. This is lacking in the lives of believers. We serve God as we deserve the abundance of things. We do not serve God with gratefulness and thankfulness. True. Let's look at verse 48. Therefore shalt thou serve thy enemy, which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness and in want of all things. And she shall put a yoke of Iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. God allowed the Israelites to be brought into bondage. Yes, sir. Because they really serve God. And we are free. We are taking the, the grace of God lightly. The way we serve God. God, like I mentioned, is a good and gracious God and kind and loving. God is a generous God, and first, last of all, God is a God of love. Amen. God is a God of love. Let's look at the last verse, verse 5. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting. And it says here, and his truth endureth to all generation. We need, and we seriously need, to serve God 
the way he prescribed here in Psalms 100, in verse 1, he said, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye land. And verse 2, Serve the Lord with gladness. I'm telling you this, Christians who are watching, and the believers, we need to get right with God. Amen. Because we are not serving God, as verse 2 says, with gladness. The countenance and the faces of many individuals that I approach that are believers, there's not a gladness in them. Come on. There's not an excitement. There's not a joy. True. There's not thankfulness in them in serving God. Could God be judging us the way we approach Him? As we read just now in the book of Deuteronomy. I don't know, but I know this. I'm excited to serve God. Yeah. I love serving God. Ooh. I'm excited to be in God's oh, house. Yeah. And in the presence of believers. Amen. I might sound like something is wrong up here. But I always praise God. Amen. I always thank God. And I bless God's name. Because that's what God wants. Amen. Amen. We are lacking when it comes to God. The way we approach God. We should tremble because of the presence of God. Please, let's close our eyes and let's pray. Father, we thank you tonight and we bless you, my God. You're a holy God, Father. You are a holy and you are a righteous God. Thank you tonight that we have the privilege, my God. We have the honor to serve you, God. Thank you. Thank you this evening, my God. That we have been given this opportunity, my God, where we can come unto you boldly unto the throne of God tonight. Father, I pray and I ask tonight for all those that are watching and will be watching. I pray that you encourage them and you lead them that they may come, God, joyfully and gladly with thanksgiving unto you, God. I pray and ask tonight, Father, that we may approach you in a right manner that is prescribed in Psalms 100 as we approach your throne, dear God. I pray and ask in the name of Jesus tonight. Please look up. I just have a few questions and I'll be done. We cannot, as Psalm 100 say, come to God with gladness and with joy until we have accepted Jesus Christ. Because this joy and this gladness we will serve God with, the Spirit of God will put it in our hearts. If you have not trusted the Lord yet, you can do so tonight. You just need to believe that Jesus died, buried, and rose again on the third day for you. You can personally do this. Quietly, it's between you and the Lord. And accept the Lord tonight. Thank you for watching.